the homily for the Sunday 6th after Pentecost, on the end of men. My dear friends, the Apostle St. Paul speaks to us today of our last destination, our happy end, when we will come to rise again with Christ and live with Him forever. He is speaking to us of our ultimate end, that is to say, of the end of men, the purpose of men. This is actually the first lesson in our Baltimore Catechism. Now, when I say the end of men, it might sound somber, but it is not. In philosophy, this means simply the purpose, our reason of being. And why are you? Have you ever asked yourselves this, my dear friends? Why do you exist? The answer is actually quite sweet and consoling, but we don't really think of it often. How many young people, teenagers, complain today about a lack of fulfillment, a lack of purpose? In that very sentence, they acknowledge they are looking for one as if it was up to them to choose it. A lack of purpose. How quickly this inner sadness could be solved if they only read the first questions of their catechism. What is our purpose? It has never been an, an open question. It has never been our choice. Your purpose has been said from all eternity. Here it is, straight from the book. The purpose for which you were created is to know, to love, and to serve God. Now, together with that question, there is another one that plagues teenagers today. My identity. Who am I? What am I supposed to be? And to that, the old ignored book that sits in many shelves untouched also has an answer. You are a creature. You were made. You are a creature made of body and soul. But most importantly, you are a creature made in the image and likeness of God. This is important, my, my dear friends. Philosophers say that you can only love that which has certain similarities with you. We love things that are alike, things that we relate to. And so it only makes sense that if God made you to love him and to love you back, it was necessary that there would be some similarities with him. When you think of God, consider how beautiful it is that he adorned you, he fashioned you, with such great perfections that you can truly say that you are alike God, that you are similar to God, that you are made in his image. Young girls and men today are troubled for their beauty and their looks. We can blame them, we have all been there really. They spend hours in the mirror, making their body beautiful. They spend hours in the gym. They look up tutorials and videos, take up diets, they pay training coaches. All to take care of their body. They put great efforts and pains. Forgetting that this thing that looks so beautiful in the mirror today might be eaten by worms, rotting in the ground, perhaps in a couple weeks. Perhaps in a couple years, but someday. And yet they forget that that which is the most beautiful, the part of them that is so beautiful that you can say it is like God, their soul, the part that never dies, the part that if you adorn it, if you make it fit, if you spend time making it better, it will never rot, it will never be eaten by worms, no one can take it away from you, your soul. Ah, my dear friend, your soul is what makes you different from the animals. Without your soul, you would not be any different than a dog. Why do you care? Why do you take care of that animal part of you, the rotting part, the perishable part in you? And you neglect the angelic part, the one that makes you like angels, the one that makes you like God. Let me tell you a story. On a certain day, a young friend of St. Philip Neri came to see him, knelt by the chair of the old priest. As the priest asked him questions about his plans, he said he was studying for an exam and he hoped to get good grades. The saint listened to him attentively, nodding approvingly. And after the man was done with his uh, story, St. Philip, sitting in his chair, looking towards him, said, And after the exam, what then? Well, then I shall try to get a degree for law. And then I'll try for the bar. Everyone tells me I can make it. And then, 
Well, if I make it as a barrister, I could marry, I could settle down, be a rich man. And then... Oh, well, uh, I might hope to end up as a judge, obtain some high office in the court of Rome. And then... Someday I should retire with a big pension, should be able to enjoy an honorable old age. And then... Then, well, father, I suppose, someday I'll have to die. And then... My dear friends, I don't know about you. My heart is always impressed when I hear the echo of those words of St. Philip Neri. And so was the heart of this boy, who gave up his ambitions to pursue that which was most important, his main purpose, to know, to love, and to serve God. Allow me now to mix a little bit of the two points we have been discussing. I said we were made in the image of God, and I said our purpose is to know, to love, and serve God. Now we can connect these two. We're made in the image of God because our soul, like God, is spiritual. And as in God, there are three persons in one God, in ourselves there is something similar, not equal, but similar. We have three faculties in one soul. These powers of our soul are first, Consciousness or memory, as it was called by the ancients, the intellect, and the will. And with these three powers, we can know, love, and serve God. With the memory or consciousness, we become aware of our own existence and of our life and actions. It is the base and foundation to be able to use the other two faculties. Once we are aware of who we are, of the fact that we are, that we can act, and that we are free to act, our intellect is the faculty that allows us to grasp reality. Whether it be material or immaterial, whether it be the reality of ideas, concepts, or the reality of things, of persons, of places. Our intellect is what puts it all together and uses it with our consciousness in order to know truth, thus enabling us to act. And to act, we have the will, the faculty to act freely, now, this is different than what animals do, because animals act in the world, but they act without understanding, they act according to instinct, as they are made to act by the natural order that is impressed in their bodies by the Creator. They cannot understand, and therefore they cannot choose. They have no understanding, they have no free will. But for us, we understand realities that are complex. We understand realities that are spiritual and abstract and we can act accordingly, and our will is perfectly free to choose. You can do good or evil. You can act according to your nature or against your nature, or even abusing your nature. You can choose to acknowledge God or to ignore Him, to love Him and to reject Him. In other words, we can be good or evil. With this, my dear friends, Allow me to conclude our catechism lesson today with an exhortation, but today we have reviewed the following facts. First, that God made us and we are his creatures. Second, that he made us in his image and likeness. And that that likeness is mainly in the soul, in our faculties of memory, intellect and will. That our soul is the most important part because it will never die. And it is our most perfect aspect. We have also thought or said that God made us for the purpose of knowing Him, loving Him, and serving Him. Three things that we do with our intellect and with our will, supported by our consciousness. We also said that our intellect knows truths, both concerning material and spiritual, and here I would make a note. Some truths, mainly of the spiritual kind, are beyond our power to grasp. For that reason, God gives us those truths. We don't find them out. God gives them to us in what we call revelation. God reveals them to us. And this revelation is found only in one place, in the Catholic Church. Now, the main truths of this revelation, the ones that are more necessary to us, are contained in the Apostles' Creed. As I finish, my dear friends, consider two beautiful things. Consider first the height of your nature, your dignity. Consider that you were made for the greatest thing possible, for God himself. Think, anything in this world is below you. This is not pride. 
It is awareness of your human nature. Wealth is below you. Pleasures are below you. Even other human creatures are below you. They, you were not created for them. You were not created for any of these things. They are all below what is going to satisfy you. They are all insufficient for your fulfillment. The only thing that will make you fulfilled, that will make you satisfied, that will make you happy, that you were born for, is God. You are an arrow, a bullet, aimed and shot at God. And you will never rest unless you reach that goal. And consider lastly, that all of this means that from eternity, before the world existed, before there was a sun, before there was the moon, before there was the stars, God had already thought of you. God thought of you before of the sun. God thought of you before the moon came up. And He loved you. And He made you always with that end in mind. He made you thinking that He would love you and that you would be able to love Him back. He made you to share His life with you. That from all eternity, think, He decided to endow you with the highest powers possible and to make you similar to Him, alike Him, so that you could share His life, love, and happiness. This is the end of men. This is why you, create, you were created. This is why you exist. As we continue Mass today, let us tell our Lord those words from St. Augustine. Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and there is no rest for our hearts until they come to rest in thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>